Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. Thanks a lot, Mark. We'll just wait in here. Boy, I sure hate Alan's office. Why? It's decorated so much better than ours. <laughs> well, even the men's room is decorated better than our office. <laughs> hey, how'd you know that? The window washer told me. <laughs> you have any idea what Alan wants to see us about? Mel didn't say. Hey, why don't they call these meetings sometime when I'm not having a snack? Hmm. There is no such time, my dear. <laughs> What are they doing here? We were playing bridge. We were just waiting for the dummy. <laughs> I thought Alan wanted to see us. But he doesn't want to see you all. You all? Even with a southern dialect. <laughs> well, who does he want to see? You, Rob. Me? Only you. Only Rob? You mean to say that I had to rush up here and let my hot chocolate get cold? Sally, I'm sorry if I didn't make myself clear. The only thing that's clear is the top of your head. <laughs> Eat your donut now, Burpee. We'll see you later. Oh, hi, Alan. Oh, oh hi. Alan. Hey, it's nice to see you. Yeah. What are they doing here? They're just leaving. Alan. Good. Uh, we just walked Rob up for a little protection. Oh, That's wonderful. Good. Yeah, a lot of mugging's been going on around the water cooler. Oh, yeah, very funny, very funny. Thank you. Don't put that in the show, though. See you around. All right, bye. Yeah. Mel, do I speak a foreign language? Uh, no, no. Shut I'm... up, Mel. Yes, sir. Can't you understand me? I said I wanted to see Rob. That is Rob. I am Alan. You are Mel. This is a door. Use it. Well, but I thought you said... Shut up, Mel. <laughs> yes, sir. Come here. Yeah. Get out of here! <laughs> what do you want to see me, uh, Alan? Just, just a minute, Rob. Rob, you're the only one I can turn to. You've got to help me. What is it, Alan? Rob. I want you to save my life. Save your life, Alan? What are you talking about? Rob, there's a bomb in this office. Right here. It's a play. No, it's a bomb. <laughs> Baby Fat by Harper Worthington Yates' new play. Yeah, I'm supposed to do it on Broadway. Yeah, I read that. Congratulations. For what? Well, Yates is a Pulitzer Prize-winning playwright. Well, he wrote a Pulitzer Prize-winning bomb there. Well, that do it, do you? Rob, you know how I feel about Broadway. I always wanted to make it big on Broadway. And, and when Harper Worthington Yates asks you to do a play, you, you just do it. You know, I'm thinking of maybe not even wearing my hair in this part. <laughs> yeah, they convinced me that great art doesn't need hair. Well, I guess so. Picasso's bald. Yeah. Yes. Guy Kibbe was bald, too. <laughs> you see, that's what I mean, Rob. You got a sense of humor. Come on, you got to fix this, Rob. What? Me? Fix Harper Worthington Yates? Well, I may have exaggerated a little when I said it, it wasn't, you know, all funny. He's given me some laughs. Uh, there are a couple of hee-hees, a couple of ha-has, and some ho-hos, but there are no big... <laughs> <laughs> well, you want me to put in the yuck? Yeah, well, there are places that are supposed to have this, but listen to this dialogue here. Yeah, I say to my brother here, you're ruthless, kid. You may get to the top and be rich, but you'll be a Machiavellionaire. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, Machiavelli was, a, was an Italian author and statesman. He was supposed to be unscrupulous, so that probably refers to... Yeah, yeah, well, I know what it means, and you know what it means. But who's going to tell the audience? What, do we give out pamphlets to explain the jokes? It is esoteric. Oh, I don't care about that. It's just too highbrow. Now, Rob, look. You know what I like, so you can fix it. Now, look, I, I, I've marked some spots here that need fixing. Well, wait a minute. How does Mr. Yates feel about my tampering with his script? Now, look, it's already Friday, and I've got to be West for the weekend for rehearsals. Now, you can get started on this and give me some pages Alan, Monday. won't he mind of a complete stranger? Now, you see, right here at the end, the first act curtain needs a big laugh now, there. Alan, wait just a second. Yates doesn't know about... Well, no. Oh, Rob, it's hard to tell a, a writer that his stuff isn't funny. You tell me that every week. Oh, but well, you're a... <laughs> you're a television writer. Oh, no offense. You know what I mean. We love each other. Yeah. You know how playwrights are. But the thing is, he will know the lines are changed. Sure, but I'll memorize what you write, and I'll throw it in during rehearsal to think I'm ad living. Now, you can't tell anybody, Buddy, Sally, or anybody. Look, Al, I'm very flattered that you think I can improve Mr. Yates' script, but if he doesn't know that I'm working on it... But it's done all the time, Rob. I'm desperate. You gotta do this, mate. No. Rob, I want this so bad I can feel it inside. You know, Rob... You've got my guts in your hands. My hands? <laughs> well, you're right. This can make me the toast of Broadway. 
Don't let me get burnt. That's a terrible joke. I know, it's in the play. That's the kind of stuff I want you to get out. What do you say, Rob? What do you say? Okay, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> you know what you are. You're a person. <laughs> but be a quiet person. Don't tell anybody about this. Huh, Rob? Rob, I love you for this. And I'll tell you what. Don't be surprised if Christmas comes a little early this year. <laughs> ah! Sorry. <laughs> I wonder what's in the envelope. Now, come on, buddy. We can't look into Rob's personal things. Yeah, but if he leaves it here, he might forget it. Leave it alone. <laughs> it's like a bunch of papers. You see? I'm getting as bad as you are. You know, that's a very suspicious-looking envelope. What's so suspicious about it? Because I don't know what's inside. <laughs> Rob wants us to know. Now, come on, let's go to work. You know, Sal, we're living in a wonderful age. They're all the little inventions we have nowadays to make life easy. Yeah. yeah? Like what? Like this clasp. Look at this little clasp on here. Look. It's a little clasp. Look at it. Opens and closes. Nothing to it, and it keeps the whole envelope protected. Little metal clasp. But they're all this good. Just open, close, open, faster. Faster. Open, close, open. Oh! I broke it. Oh. That's not nice. Just leave it alone. Did the papers scatter? Didn't throw it down hard enough. Maybe if we kick it around a little bit, you know, kind of, you know, like... What's going on? Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, look who's here. <laughs> yeah, just in time, I think, right? Uh, how did this get over here? Oh, uh, it fell. <laughs> Fell off the shelf over the year. Oh, listen, Rob, they've come a long way with envelopes. <laughs> All right. What do you want? A divorce. In a minute. Shall I call the lawyer? Uh, that's all right, honey. I'll call him. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Let me help you with no, no. it. No, 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 no. That's all right. I know you've got baby fat on your mind. Hey, maybe you can use that in the play. Oh, no, no. I guess uh, ghost riders aren't allowed to have ghost riders, are they? Not now, honey. How late you work on it last night? Two o'clock. I looked at the clock, Rob. It was four. Yeah, and it was four o'clock. But the last two hours, I just talked to myself about this job. Did you say anything interesting? I don't know. I didn't really listen. <laughs> Still excited about it? Oh. Yeah. How many people can say that they're writing a play by Harper Worthington Yates? Well, you'll never be able to say it. You think this is unethical? Do you? I ask you first. Well, it kind of feels unethical, doesn't it, to you? Well, you know, it's ghostwriting. Ghostwriting doesn't have to be unethical. Well, whatever you call it, Rob, I just don't see how it can lead to anything good. Well, honey, you don't understand. Rob, let me ask you something. Are you doing this because you're afraid of Alan? No, I'm doing it because I respect Alan Brady. A man of his caliber has great firing power. Oh. <laughs> if that's the reason you're doing this play, then there's nothing I can say to you. Oh, come on, honey. You know that's not the only reason. Rob, look, it's just that I always thought when you wrote a play, I'd be able to run around the neighborhood and say, Hey there, my husband wrote a play. And with this, all I can say is, Hey there. <laughs> There are a lot of wives like you who can say hey there, like Mrs. Doyle, Mrs. Merles. Whose wives are those? Jack Doyle and Dave Merles and other ghostwriters <laughs> who make a fortune fixing other people's plays. Yeah, but you see, you hear about them. I mean, they don't have to sneak around and hide in closets. I'm not hiding in a closet. I'm working in my own living room. <laughs> okay, you want some lunch? I took the job, so let's just forget about it. I'm not talking. If I think about it, I'm not going to be able to do the job. Let's think about something else. Like, how about some lunch? Darling, I just offered you some. I don't want to talk about it. Whatever. Sardine sandwich? Anything. Cut off the tails. White bread or whole wheat? Anything. Well, whole wheat. And you got any white? Yeah. Hello. Oh, hi, Alan. Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, that's too bad. What? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm just uh, punching up the candy store sketch here. What? 
It's out? Oh, Al, I can't come all the way up to Westport now. Well, but I, I know your dreams and your guts. Is that Alan? Yeah, well, hold it a minute, Alan. Uh, honey, he wants me to drive up to Connecticut. Oh, Rob, I'm making your sandwich. <laughs> said, Alan, I don't know. My wife's making a sandwich. <laughs> no, of course not. I just didn't, haven't had any lunch or anything yet. You really need me, huh? Well, I, I guess I can make it all right. Yeah, okay. All right. Bye. Honey, I gotta drive all the way up to Westport right now. Oh, Rob, you can't go now. Hey, honey, I'll take the sandwich with me. What, with your least little <laughs> sandwich? Oh, okay. They're having all kinds of trouble up there. They've cut so many things now, I don't even know what it is I'm punching up. You really have to go. Yeah. Did you put any tomato or onion on that sandwich? No. How you like that? I gotta punch up my own sandwich. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, that's so sad. You're under a delusion, kid. I'm your mother, not your brother. That can't be right. No. <laughs> You're under a delusion, kid. I'm your brother, not your mother. I'm not gonna take off my hair for this play. <laughs> yeah, come in. Me, Alan. Rob, come in. Hi. Quick. Anybody see you? Well, I had to ask somebody where the dressing room was. Who'd you ask? Not Gates, was it? Not unless he wears gold tights. Gross. Stop joking around and give me some jokes. Okay, take it easy, Alan. I saw one gallon gold tights and a German shepherd outside the door. The dog? You saw the dog? Well, yeah, he's not going to say anything. <laughs> Rob, that's Harper Worthington Yates' dog. He takes him to all the rehearsals. He says it gives him inspiration. Oh, yeah, I read about that one. Yeah, that's the kind of kooks I'm working with. Who is it? Harper Worthington Yates. Rob, quick. Quick what? Quick, into the closet. Into the closet? Yeah, where else? In my wallet? Come on, I know you're here. Wait a minute, Rob. I was right up. Be right with you. Yes. Hi, Harper. I hope I'm not disturbing. No, that's all right. Hi, Ben. Uh, I just wanted to inquire whether you like the changes I made. Oh, I lo love the changes. Love the changes. Good, good. Changing that candy store to a graveyard was a wild idea. But you're most kind. Yeah, I loved it. I may have a few ideas of my own, Harper. Well, any idea of yours? Well... <laughs> Mr. Ben seems to be after something in your clothes. Yeah, probably a, a mouse trying to break into show business. Uh, say, look, uh, Hopper, I, I got a lot of lines to learn. Oh, oh uh, Mr. Ben and I understand. An artist in the throes of creation must be forever alone. Oh, you're right about that. Uh, uh, Mr. Ben, say goodbye to Mr. Allen. Uh, so long, Mr. Ben. Uh, now we must leave this artist with the privacy he so desires. Oh, so Mr. Ben. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <sighs> All right, Rob. Rob? Rob, <laughs> uh, what are you fooling around for? I didn't bring you up here to play jokes. I didn't drive all the way up here to hide in the closet either. Look at this mess in here. My sandwich and my papers right. and everything. Never mind that. Just, just give me the lines, will you? Oh, just a second. I'm going to find the first part of them here. Here. Okay. Oh, what is that? Huh? Oh, just part of a sardine. Oh, get it off of there. <laughs> Take it easy, Alan. That's just a fish head. I know, I know. Get it off. It's kind of frightening to look at a joke and have it look back at you. Let's see. Hey. <laughs> hey, this is not bad, Rob. <laughs> hey, these are funny. <laughs> these lines about the summer camp. You know you're a genius. No, they're not. No, you're a genius, Rob. And not only that, you're a very sweet person to come up here like this. And from now on, I'm going to treat you like a person. Get in the closet. <laughs> you said... After you get out of the closet, I'll treat you like a person. I'm not staying in the closet anymore. Get in the closet, Alan. Will you... Hi there. Oh, I didn't know you were busy. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, this is... Uh... Is my tailor, Vito. He's uh, just making a new jacket for me. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. I want you to meet uh, Vito Schneider, my tailor. Vito, this is my director, Lionel Dan. Hello. Yeah. He makes all my uh, wardrobe, my television shows. Well, if it's a hit, I'll order a couple of suits. Listen, we got a problem. Yeah. We... Isn't that jacket just like his pants? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, yes. Well, you see, uh, last time he wore those slacks, I told him I wanted a whole suit made of that material. Uh, what is it, Lyle? Well, in the first act, the sister-in-law's lines are lousy. Maybe Harper could make some changes. Are you kidding? Those are some of the best lines in the whole play. You let your tailor read the play? Oh, for luck. I let him read it for luck. Harper's got a dog, I got a tailor. <laughs> fit it, kid. Fit the jacket. Smart lad. Yeah, well, maybe, but we ought to leave writing the writer. Yeah, that's right. So I, Don't I, butt I, in. I, you're a tailor, so tail. Now, fit, fit. <laughs> Not so tight in the waist. Though. Would you just mark the jacket? What, mark what? With that chalk, you know, that, that, that soap chalk that you have here. Just mark the jacket. Soap. Now, what is it, Lionel? You cut that little skimpy, didn't you, Vito? I won't tell you how to direct. You don't tell me how to alter a suit. <laughs> Now, you've got your show, Lionel, and you've got your tailoring. Now, just, just, just mark it. Just mark it. Uh, Lionel, what, what do you want with me? What about Clara Lee's costume? What about... <laughs> Buck, Buck says that you like the dress with the apricot bow. What's wrong with apricot bows? There are so many, it looks like she's surrounded by hummingbirds. <laughs> Look, I'm only a star. Buck Brown is the designer. Listen, Vito, you're a tailor. What do you think? I never cared a lot for apricot bows. There, you see, from a pro. Listen, we can start to see you whenever you're ready, Alan. Yeah, I'd like to talk to Vito for a minute. I'd like to talk to you, too. Yeah, wait a minute, Lionel, I'll go with you. <laughs> mark the jacket, mark it. I'll speak to you about the material later. Um, I, would... oh, oh, no, I wish I was a tailor. <laughs> Who's Vito Schneider? Uh, I think that's me, only th I think that's Schneider. Uh, well, who are you? Buck Brown, and what's wrong with apricot bows? <laughs> How many Broadway shows have you designed? I've done 16. Well, I, I never... Can I you know. double stitch? <laughs> Can you make hoops? I'm the only one who ever made Peter Pan fly without showing an inch of undergarment. <laughs> and who are you to come here and pick on my bows? I've never even heard of you. I work hard, Vito. Very, very hard. Hate that fabric. <laughs> my designs have won awards, and I will not have a buttonhole butcher coming here and telling my director what I'm to design. I'm <clears throat> listening to all of a great big mistake, Mr. Brown, and I'm very sorry. But I should think so. I'm sorry I flared. <laughs> It's just that I've had a terrible day. And now they want me to make a sweater for Mr. Ben. <laughs> Bow wow. <laughs> it worked. Everybody loved the new lines. Everybody, including Harper. Then why did you introduce me as your tailor? Well, I had to think of something fast. What's the difference? We're a hit. The producer's coming right back now to tell me all about it. Am I still going to be your tailor? Well, we, we're stuck with the story, Rob. If it's all right with you, if you won't introduce me to people, I'd rather wait in the car. Now, no, wait a minute, Rob. Are you really this upset about it? You're darn right. If you won't tell people who I am, I don't want to be here. Well, Rob, you're right. I, I'm sorry. You're, you're absolutely right. Now, look, the producer's coming down the hall. Why don't you leave by the window? What? Yeah, come on, I'm, 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 I don't out the window, Rob. You're not supposed to be you. seen here. And take your jacket. Come I'd on. Like to... Hey, hey. Oh, for a come on, Rob. <laughs> what all the noise was. Well, then why does not Richie put this skateboard away? I've told him a million times to put it away. He did, dear. He put it in the closet. Well, he put it in his own closet. I don't put my golf up in his closet, do I? Yes. Well, I had a right to. It's my house. When he grows up, has his own house, he can put his things wherever he wants to put them. But right now, he's got to put them in his own... And why are you defending him, anyway? What did Alan do to you? He put me in his closet. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your jacket? I was attacked by a bar of soap. Never mind. <laughs> I've been hidden and yelled at and pushed and pulled and yanked and called a rotten tailor. Who called you a rotten tailor? Buck Brown. <laughs> the cowboy star? Pardon me. <laughs> you look great in there. Thank you. Rob, a tailor? Oh, yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. Oh, no, you don't. You can't 
walk in here and say somebody called you a rotten tailor and then not talk about so it. I'm sorry, honey, honest. I'm... Not out of the bottle, Rob. <laughs> Alan Brady just put me through the most humiliating day of my life. Ooh, that Alan Brady. He thinks he owns you. He makes me so mad. Honey, it's not all Alan's fault. Rob, how come we can't ever be mad together? Huh? Well, a few minutes ago, you were furious with Alan, and now that I'm mad at him with you, you're not anymore. Well, no, it's, it isn't all his fault, honey. It's only half his fault. I'm a dope. Darling, I think you'd better make up your mind who you're mad at, Alan or yourself. Well, I'm this half mad at Alan, and this half's mad at me. Oh, honey. Just kiss Alan's side. You meet Mr. Gates? Oh, yeah, you ordered three suits and a tuxedo. There you go again. Honey, everybody up there thinks that I'm Alan's tailor. Rob, you know what Alan is doing to you? Yeah, I know what he's doing to me. He's making a haberdasher out of me. He's stealing your brains, Rob. But not anymore. I'm going up there tomorrow. I'm going to tell Alan he is. I'm no longer hiding my light under his bushel. Good for you. And if I'm going to do that rewrite, I'm going to get credit just like Dave Murrow's and Jack Doyle get, right? Yay! And if I say it with as much anger as I'm feeling right now, you'll be able to run around the neighborhood and say, Hey there, my husband's out of work! <laughs> I'm uh, so glad that you and Mr. Ben are friends. <laughs> well, you're either his friend or his lunch. <laughs> hey, wonderful dog. Wonderful. He's, he's all I have since uh, Blossom passed away. Oh, uh, uh, how Sunday long were you married? Uh, uh, Blossom was Mr. Ben's wife. Oh, oh I, I'm sorry, Ben. I didn't know. <laughs> hey, Alan, I got it. Oh, hi there. Uh, hi. Uh, you know my tailor, Vitor Schneider? That's right. You ordered three suits. Oh, uh, and a dinner jacket. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, Alan, I want to talk to you. I see you're busy. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. You go right ahead. You talk about your wardrobe while I make a phone call to the theater. Oh, well, why don't you use Mel's office? You'll be more comfortable oh, in there. Thank you. Just make yourself at home. Thank you. Mel, get out of your office. Well, I've got to finish. Shut up, Mel. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, why did you come up when Harper was here? I'm sorry, Alan. I didn't know he was up here, but it doesn't make any difference because I'm through with this job. I've had it. Oh, you've been talking to your wife. No, I've been talking to myself. That'll give you an idea of how upset I am. Look, can't we talk this over calmly? All right, all right, I'm calm. Mr. Yates has written a play which is not very good. Rob, not in front of Mr. Ben. The play's weak. What am I whispering in front of the dog for? Because he's smart and he bites. The play's no good. That play is not very good. It needs punching up with good, strong jokes. Rob, that's cruel. He's a widower. <laughs> Playwrights need help with their first comedy. That's why there are guys like Merle and Doyle who come in. They saved a lot of shows. I know that, Rob. And you also know that guys like Merle's don't sneak around and hide in any closets. Look, I don't think Harper will go for you. I don't care. I go for me. Oh, hi, Harper. Uh, are you and uh, Vito finished? Well, uh, well, Mr. Yates, I am finished being a tailor. I happen to be a writer. Well, good for you. I, I told everyone that I was a writer when I was nothing but a butcher boy. Uh, butcher boy, a tailor, a writer can come from any old place. Now you keep right on trying, Vito. Don't you make it. Alan, uh, Harper, uh, would you sit down a moment? Uh, uh, with Mr. Bean. Oh, yeah, that, that's fine. What is it? Well, I, I've been thinking about baby fat, and, uh, yeah. well, uh, I've got a suggestion to make. I don't know if you're going to like it. Actually, it's not my idea. It's, it's Vito's here. Your tailor made a suggestion about my play? Uh, yeah. Why did you tell him, Vito? <clears throat> yeah. What sort of suggestion? Well... A heel! I, I thought that he... You tell him, Alan. Uh, uh, what, uh, what he was saying is that, well, you know, there are play doctors like Jack Doyle... And a heel! Uh, uh, and... <laughs> and so he explained the whole thing to Harper. He told him that I was his writer. We discuss play doctors like Murrow's, who do a job on the up and up, no shame involved at all. Oh, that's great, Rob. Now you can do the job with some dignity. Absolutely not. You're not going to do it? No, sir. Why? I hired Dave Murrow's. <laughs> but you only used him as a for instance. Yeah, I know. And they hired him? Yeah, all right. I said I, I like Dave Murrow's, and Harper Yates said he loved Dave Murrow's, and they hired him. <laughs> Guess it just wasn't meant to be, huh? Well, don't feel badly, darling. Why? Harper Yates called and said he needs your help. Really? Mm -hmm. He said he wants the dinner jacket he ordered by Tuesday. <laughs>